Venom The Last Dance might be a hit or miss for many, but the movie surely has its moments that can make it worth your time. One of the most memorable bits of the film is the plethora of symbiotes that appear, especially during the action-packed final act. Of course, the titular Venom takes center stage, but there are many other notable symbiotes from Marvel Comics who have made their live-action appearance. A few of the symbiotes in the movie haven't been identified, but that hasn't stopped the fan theories from creating quite a buzz. In this video, we'll bring you a complete list of all the symbiotes that have appeared in the movie and everything you need to know about them. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you liked our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. Is Patrick Mulligan bonded to Toxin? This has been a debatable topic ever since the movie was released, especially because many viewers have assumed that Patrick is actually bonded to the symbiote Toxin. However, that is not the case, and we'll explain why. Patrick, if you remember, was a police detective, but the symbiote that bonded to him during the events of Let There Be Carnage has left his body. He is brought to the facility under the Imperium's watch, and Dr. Teddy Payne has injected him with one of the symbiotes from the laboratory. This symbiote ends up bonding with Patrick, and it's a key moment in the movie because this stabilizes Patrick and allows him to spill some crucial information about Null and his quest for the Codex that can free him from an eternity of bondage. He's after Venom and Eddie in order to retrieve this Codex, and General Strickland and the scientists at the facility learn all about this grand scheme from the symbiote bonded with Patrick. There's a crazy transformation video during this conversation, and we can see Patrick change completely into the symbiote form. It's completely green, and the lower part of the body is somewhat snake-like, which confirms that the symbiote is certainly not Toxin. Unfortunately, there's no real clarity regarding the true identity of this symbiote, and the green symbiote that we know about from the comic books has actually been used elsewhere. Patrick's symbiote version just happens to be one of the many loopholes that have jeopardized Venom, The Last Dance, and maybe a longer runtime might have cleared up the confusion. Toxin did bond with Patrick earlier, but the teal-colored serpent-like symbiote that we see later is surely not him. In the comic books, Toxin is the offspring of Carnage, but the latter felt only hatred toward this new spawn. Carnage bonded the new symbiote to Patrick Mulligan after giving birth and planned to kill them both because the symbiote was yet to be powerful enough to fight back. Venom protected the duo and fought Carnage, and he was the one who gave the name Toxin. However, things soon changed once Venom realized that Toxin was going to be way stronger than he had anticipated. He joined hands with Carnage to destroy Toxin, and Toxin found an unexpected ally in Spider-Man, who helped him to fight Venom and Carnage. The unique abilities of Toxin included his special skill of sticking to walls and changing his identity to a completely different person. Most importantly, Toxin is red from the waist up and black from the abdomen down, and surely the one bonded with Patrick in the movie is not him. Agony bonded with Dr. Teddy Payne. Dr. Teddy Payne is introduced in the movie, complete with a backstory that seems rather irrelevant for the story. It's revealed that she lost her brother to a nasty lightning strike when she was a teenager, and the accident left her with scars on the left side of her body and a paralyzed left arm. She has followed the dreams of her brother by working with a secret government program exploring alien life, and she's the lead scientist studying the symbiotes on Earth, and has been secured in the secret Area 55 facility. However, she's quite protective of the symbiotes, and always keen on ensuring that these alien entities aren't harmed. After the xenophages sent by Null attack the facility, after tracking down Venom, the symbiotes are released and they fight back by bonding with every random person in the facility. During this intense battle sequence, Dr. Payne allows a symbiote to bond with her in order to save her colleagues. This symbiote has long hair and certain electrical powers, and it's a fairly simple deduction that this symbiote is Agony. The comic book history of Agony details a narrative where a sinister organization called Life Foundation forces spawned five symbiotes from Venom in order to be used as guards, and one of them was Agony. It was purple in color like we see in the movie, and it bonded to a security officer named Leslie Desneria. Agony covered its host with a dark purple biomass mixed with dark pink, and it had certain superhuman abilities when bonded with a host. The physical strength of Agony was insane because it could enhance its muscle mass and participate in heavy duty missions. Other than this, Agony had all the usual symbiote superpowers, and it could spit acid that could burn through almost any substance. In Venom The Last Dance, Agony survives the intense battle sequence, and we hope to see more of this intriguing symbiote in future movies. 
Is it Lasher bonded to Dr. Sadie? Dr. Sadie is one of the scientists working at the facility, and she seems to be a subordinate of Dr. Teddy Payne. During the course of the movie, she bonds with Venom briefly in order to help Eddie escape, but her final bonding takes place with a symbiote that is most probably Lasher. This happens during the final battle with the Xenophages sent by Null in order to retrieve the Codex which is the key to him being released from his captivity. After bonding with Lasher, her appearance turns green with certain red marking. She even has some lethal tentacles that emerge from her body, and these tentacles are quite handy as Lasher fights with the Xenophage creatures. Lasher doesn't get the best of endings though, and is eventually killed by the Xenophage, like many other symbiotes at the facility. Just like Agony, Lasher was also one of the symbiotes forcibly extracted from Venom, and it bonded with a security officer named Ramon. It was quite violent and immature, and had a clear red mark marking on its head, which is missing in the movie. The comic book version covered its host in a green biomass and enhanced the host's abilities. The biomass could be manipulated as required, most likely as an effect of the Earth's environment. Besides all the usual superhuman abilities that are associated with symbiotes, Lasher had six tentacles when bonded to a host, three on each side. While it cannot be confirmed that this is actually Lasher that bonds with Dr. Sadie, most clues point to the same. Anyway, it's an unnecessary debate because the symbiote is dead, and we won't see a comeback unless something unexpected happens. Do we see Hybrid in the movie? This is probably the coolest symbiote appearance in the movie, and the two-headed monstrosity that we see merging with different people during the final confrontation is probably Hybrid. This symbiote was first introduced in the comics back in 1995, and it's exactly what the name suggests a hybrid of other symbiotes of the time like Lasher, Riot, and Phage. Hybrid in the comic books would climb walls and had web-slinging abilities like Spider-Man, and his camouflage abilities were also remarkable. Hybrid could also spawn bladed weapons from its form bonded with a host, and it was among the faster symbiotes out there. Unfortunately, even though the symbiote looks super cool in the movie, it dies a rather quick death and you only get to catch a glimpse of the unique hybrid. The yellow symbiote might be Phage. Once again, we're only assuming here because the movie doesn't mention the name of the symbiotes in the narrative. However, there's a symbiote that is yellowish-orange in color and bonds with the security personnel Jim in order to save his life. During the Xenophage attack, this symbiote bonds with his host and fights alongside Venom and the others. This has a clear resemblance to Phage and is another of the Life Foundation symbiotes, forcibly extracted from Venom. In the comic book narrative, Phage covered its host with orange or yellow biomass, and when attached to a host, it had several blades all around its body. What a waste of really exciting symbiotes, one might say after watching The Last Dance, and they wouldn't be wrong. Is the fire shooting symbiote Big Mother? The battle sequence when the symbiotes fight with the Xenophage troops is quite chaotic and confusing, but there's a symbiote that shoots fire. Now, there aren't too many symbiotes who are capable of this feat, and Big Mother was one of them. Although technically she wasn't a symbiote initially, and only after the introduction of Null did she become one. It wouldn't be surprising if the movie tried to sneak in a clever cameo with her presence during the climactic action scene. Big Mother from the comic books had an intimidating presence, and she possessed the same powers as some of the other symbiote dragons. She was extremely durable, and her fire breath was a lethal force. Big Mother was simply gigantic, and her fangs and claws were effective weapons, apart from her magic abilities. Venom and Eddie Brock Given how the movie has been essentially marketed as their final adventure together, it's quite obvious that both Venom and his host Eddie Brock have a major role to play in the narrative. We've already seen more of an anti-hero side of Venom than his usual villainous self in the last two movies, and the saga continues in Venom 3, where we see Venom valuing his human relationship, and of course, his buddy cop chemistry with Eddie is better than ever. There are some cool moments featuring Venom as he takes on the Xenophages, sent after him by the symbiote creator Null. We probably get to see Venom in his maximum powers, and the final part of the movie actually sees him sacrificing himself in order to protect Eddie and the others, and also to foil the plans of Null. Whether or not Venom is truly dead is the subject for another video, but it's safe to say that he's been a saving grace for an otherwise underwhelming movie. Some other memorable symbiote cameos. The facility contained several symbiotes, and when all of them fought together against the Xenophages, it was tough to keep track of who was who. Aside from all these prominent mentions, there are a few others that remained relatively obscure. For instance, the red symbiote could well be Scream, which is another of Life Foundation's products used for security purposes. There was also a silvery white symbiote, and this one bonded with a scientist in the facility. There might have been Scorn, too, in the mix of things, and we cannot rule out the possibility that all of this was simply to use the CGI effects, and maybe the makers didn't even think of it with as much depth as we are. 
Marvelous Verdict MCU might utilize symbiotes more in its upcoming projects. Some of the symbiotes that we've explored in this video are no more than mere cameo appearances, but the fact that the MCU has introduced them might hint at a broader role. There's a natural fan following of symbiotes, and this might be utilized in the upcoming movies, with or without Venom. Also, it's worth remembering that the movie confirms the presence of a few symbiotes on Earth, even after the violent showdown, and it would be surprising if they didn't reappear in future projects. We would have loved it if the symbiotes other than Venom had more screen time, and it is indeed a wasted opportunity to bring them all in for so little. Do share your thoughts on the symbiotes shown in Venom The Last Dance, and also tell us which other symbiote from the comic books you would like to see on the big screen. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.